Hello everyone, how are you guys? Uh, it's Gokar Manzoor, a teacher, trainer, and life coach. Uh, today we are going to start a new series that is uh, statistics. You can say business statistics. Uh, we'll try to cover all the co uh, major concepts and important concepts of statistic in this series. Uh, this is uh, lecture number one of the series. So before going to start the class, uh, just I want to introduce myself so that uh, you can know me who your instructor is. Uh, this is Kaukab Manzoor. Uh, you can see my WhatsApp number. You can see my YouTube link where you can have more than 300 uh, plus videos, uh, almost probably 330 videos about different subjects. Uh, plus uh, there's a Facebook page where, where you can see my all the uh, training activities, coaching and career counseling activities uh, that's going keep going on. And you can also follow me on Instagram and LinkedIn and all these things. <clears throat> so uh, here are the organization for which I worked as trainer. There are various organizations, uh, schools, college, universities, government departments and uh, various others, right? So what we basically are going to cover in this uh, class uh, before, going to it i'll just request you advise you you must have a pen and a notebook with yourself so that all the explanation that is given in the uh, in this lecture you can better note it down right so today it's first lecture so we'll start from the very beginning uh, what we are going to cover is uh, what do you mean by data elements variables observations these are the terms that you might have heard uh, but you probably uh, are not aware that what exactly the meaning of these things plus what is quantitative data qualitative data cross section and time series data etc cetera, etc cetera. there are various other things that we'll also uh, learn in, with the passage of time right and then how the uh, data is acquired right w what are the sources of the data from where we can get that data and what are the consideration in the data acquisition when we are getting the data so what are the things that we need to take into account uh, next lecture will be probably about uh, well well probably you can say they will discuss from the definition of statistics and descriptive statistic and inferential statistic and some other basic concepts so in this way we'll try to go to the first chapter uh, probably in two lectures so are you guys are ready <clears throat> okay let's begin what is data now data are the facts and the figures that are collected summarized analyzed and interpreted now means some figures some numbers some facts that we collect from the market from any source maybe from internet from anywhere so we can get that data we collect it then we summarize it and so that uh, we can get some meaningful uh, result out of it and we probably then analyze it and then we interpret it so that we can get the understanding of what that data mean basically. So that's just what data is, right? And the data collected in the particular study are referred as data set. For example, you're conducting a research. So you have a data of uh, some patients, you are a medical student and you are, you are having the data of 20 patients. So whatever data you have, that entire 20 patients data will be called as data set. Right. So data is what? It's the facts and figures that we collect. How to summarize it and how to analyze it and how to interpret it that we will uh, learn with the passage of time. Right. But at this stage, so it is important to know the basic definition. Now, what is variable elements and observation? Now, elements are the entities on which the data are collected. Means those things against which we are collecting the data. For example, as I said, you are a, pay, a medical student and you are collecting the data of the patients, right? So patients will be elements. Okay, then what is variable? So when you are collecting the data of patients, so there will be certain things that you are uh, interested in, like for example, patients' blood pressure, patients' blood sugar level, or their heart rate level, whatever. So these are all will be the variables, right? And then the set of the measurement collected from the particular element is called as and observation. So whatever we are collecting the information, all that information is called as observation. Like here you can see this diagram will clear this, sorry, this slide will clear the entire concept. You see, for example, we here are the companies uh, that we are collecting the data uh, about uh, stock exchange, annual sales and earning shares, etc. right? So all these are the variables, stock exchange, because we are collecting the data about stock exchange, right? annual sales and earning shares etc per share and companies will be called as element because on these companies we are collecting the data so what will be the observation that energy south company has otc 
exchange, talk exchange market, they're being traded, their sales is this, their earning is this. So that entire is called as observation about energy south because that is about one element, right? Similarly, this one figure will be called as datum or this one figure 0.33 or this one figure 0.86 will be called as datum. And that entire, all the figures will be called as data set. This is the data set for these companies against these variable. So you clear, these are the variables on which data is collected. These are the elements uh, about which we are having certain variables. And then whatever the figures we are collecting, all the figures are called as data set. And one figure is called as datum because datum is the plural of data, right? Hope now these concepts are clear. Now, what are the qualitative and quantitative data? So we are having different types of data uh, when we are doing statistical analysis. So you might have uh, obviously heard about these two terms and sometimes we are uh, confused at what we do have, uh, what do you mean by qualitative and what do we have quantitative? So let's discuss them one by one. So it depends that what kind of data do we need, right? So for example, what is qualitative data? Qualitative as the name clarifies quality. So we are labeling or names, they are labels or the names used for identifying an attribute of an each element. So here we are not talking about some numbers. We are talking about some characteristics, some features, uh, some attributes, right? So they are mostly used as called as nominal and ordinal. We will have another video on it uh, in, uh, soon that what is nominal and what is ordinal. So, okay, what is qualitative? It is it is mostly non-numeric data. It can be numeric, but mostly it is non-numeric. So here, the statistical analysis for the qualitative data are very limited. We are having less numbers, uh, less the, um, analysis in it. Now, what type of data do we have? Like for example, in qualitative, uh, sorry, uh, we have like uh, eye colors, that how many students do have green eye colors? Uh, uh, the eyes color is green or brown or black or something like that, right? How many are Christian, Muslims, Hindus? Uh, it seems similarly, how many are Americans, Mexicans, Italians, uh, Canadians, right? So all these are the characteristics. So here uh, we may use the numbers like we have 50 Americans and 50, 30 Mexicans or something like that. So, but we are categorizing based on the quality. So quality means we are labeling or giving the names of it, an attribute. So sometimes similarly, we are using in research uh, in, in number of population based on their categories like religion, ethnicity, uh, from which city they do belongs, right? Single parent child, or uh, you can say full family, et cetera, et cetera. So these are all qualitative data. Then quantitative data is very simple when we're talking about the numbers. So we may have numbers in two shapes. One is called as discrete and one is called as continuous. Continue, discrete means when we are, we are we can count them uh, without uh, with some breaks like you know one two three four five like how many students are there in the class fifty students but in continuous we don't have breaks we have continuous data we use decimals in it right so there is no separation between possible values like we can say what is the time now so you can say twenty three past five so or what is the weight for example, 80.05 pounds, whatever. So we see here we are having continuous numbers, but we cannot say in case of discrete, we will not say that how many students are there. So we cannot say 2.3 students are there in the class. What we will say, we'll say either two or three. So we cannot say 2.3 or 5.6 because it's not possible. So these are called discrete data when we are having uh, space in the, only between two, and three, there are numerous numbers, 2.1, 2.2, 2.2, 2.3, 3. They does not exist in discrete, right? But in continuous, we take these values. So when we have such kind of data, like people, populations, number of the companies, so we use discrete data. And we are talking about sales, uh, when we are talking about shares, when we are talking about the uh, um, annual growth or weight or height or blood pressure or something or temperature. So we use continuous data where we use decimals as well. Right? So quantitative data are always numerical. There's no non-numerical. So ordinary arithmetic operations are meaningful. Like we'll see, uh, we'll discuss in little later lectures. Arithmetic means average 
mean, median, mode, etc. We will use for these kind of data. So that is the difference between qualitative and quantitative data. Hope the concept is clear now. Now, what is cross-section and time series data? Cross-sectional data means when we collect the data on one certain period of time, right? At one point, at same point of time. So data detailing the number of building permits issues in June 2020 in each of the countries, counties of Texas, right? So that is one point of time, like June. Similarly, for we say, what are the incomes of the people living in the entire taxes in June 2020. So that what we did, we are getting the data on one point of time, same point of time, right? So that is called as cross section data. But when we collect the data over a period of time, over the years, over the, over the uh, months, so we'll call it as time series, you see, it's a series. So data delaying the number of building permits issues in Travis County, Texas in each of the last 36 months. So in each month, we will see how much, how many permits are issued. So in one month, in first month, there might be, let's suppose 10, then for the 12, then 15, then 16, then 18. So in each month we are collecting the data. So it's, it's over a period of time. While in cross section, it was only for June, 2020. So cross section mean one point of time, time series mean over a period of time, over the five months, 10 months, 20 months, five years, 20 years, 30 years, like this, right? Now, from where we can get the data, we are having various sources from where we can get the data. So data needed for a particular publication might already exist within a firm. For example, detailed information is kept on customer, supplier, employees. For example, we have companies do have their own databases from where you can get the data, right? <clears throat> Economic data are available on various, uh, you can say websites as well from organization that specialize in collecting the data. We have various independent firms uh, which, uh, have collect, which have collected the data. So you can access them and you can get the data from them. Similarly, uh, we have government agencies. Uh, we can get the data from them as well. Data are also available from variety of industrial association uh, and special interest organization. So as I said, there are various government and non-government organization, independent as well as uh, public sector organization, which are solely responsible for collecting the data. So we can get the data from them. So it's a good source for collection of or obtaining of data. Internet is another big source. So we are having various websites, uh, as you can see, census.gov, uh, GOV, or various others, IMA, World Bank, CIA, Factbook, et cetera, et cetera, Index Mendy, economics.com, et cetera, right? So all these are the websites where you can get the different types of data. Again, it depends what kind and type of data do you need, right? So a number of companies specializing in making information available over the internet. So we can get the data from there. Statistical studies, we are having various researches that are published and experimental or observational. Uh, so you can also get the data from them as well. What are experimental studies? Uh, the variables of interest are first identified and then one or more factors are controlled so that the that the data can be obtained how the factors influence the variable so for example we are we, we are interested in some psychological uh, experiments or uh, you can say uh, bi bi biological labs so we can have these uh, variables where they want to see the relationship between one variable over other while they take all the test variables in control so that is called experimental study. So don't get confused uh, with the passage of time you will learn. But anyway, the, we can get the data from these experiments. So in short, we have different types of experiments and observational studies where people have collected the data through in their researches. And you can also get that data for your uh, own study as well. So studies with no attempt to make control or influence the variable of interest means there are some studies where we don't have control we just see the observation and we have let's suppose i am just uh, seeing that uh, i'm standing outside the cinema and just observing that how many people uh, that are coming from the cinema uh, they are happy and they are enjoy they have enjoyed the movie right so that's my observation i just count them and i write them so that is the data that you can have an access over it right if i publish that data right similarly is a survey means questionnaire we can make a question and we can collect the data so these are the sources of the data now, what you need to take into account while you are collecting the data, there are certain factors that you need to take into account, uh, like time requirement, how much time do you need? It will be consuming, like from internet, it's very easy to get the data, not easy, but comparatively easy. 
but to access a government organization or access a private organization they may have certain limitations uh, or they may require some time so to get the data how much time do you need right then the cost there are various companies they charge for providing you the data so organization often charge for information uh, even if it is not their primary business but they say okay if you need uh, this uh, uh, information so we will charge you so it uh, you need to see that whether you can bear those expenses or not and data errors sometimes all the data that is available they may not be accurate uh, so you have to take care into account that uh, whether or not there exist some errors in it so using the data that happens uh, to be available or we required with little care can be led to poor misleading information so if you do not if you are not very careful about, about the data so that data might be incorrect and you use it for your own study and that might lead to some disastrous uh, results right so that can create a trouble for you so i hope uh, i think that's uh, enough for today so in the next lecture we'll discuss what is statistic and different uh, branches of the statistics so that you can uh, understand about it so i think for, uh, for today it's enough so i hope the concepts are clear if there is any confusion question or query so you can use this email address and you can write it to me or you can even comment on this uh, video as well so i will uh, reply you okay take care see you next time